Well, welcome back um, to our ongoing series on retro computing and programming. It's been a long time since the last video, so I do apologise for that, but hopefully we can get going again uh, with a great video. So today um, we're going to be conducting a comprehensive tutorial on how to install and operate the PCM emulator and in particular how to run Windows 98 SE on it. We will also be delving into the process of installing and running some classic games ensuring everything operates seamlessly. In my previous videos I've used VirtualBox um, however as the technology landscape evolves so do our tools of choice. Currently PCM stands as my uh, preferred option. What distinguishes PCM is its capability to emulate physical hardware such as sound cards, graphic cards and 3D accelerators such as the Voodoo 2 uh, 3D accelerator which we're going to use today. Uh, this is not how VirtualBox works uh, at all. It uses a, um, a technology called virtualization instead. It doesn't actually emulate the hardware hardware. Um, this has uh, profound implications particularly when it comes to running games which can be a challenge on VirtualBox uh, due to those limitations. With PCM the experience is vastly different and improved but rather than merely tell you about it let's get started with the tutorial and allow you to witness the difference for yourself. The first step then is to install P the actual PCM emulator which is a pretty simple process uh, but we've got to download the install file for this first of all. Um, here is the address for it here. You could just type PCM uh, download into Google and that would bring you here no problem at all but there are a number of things that we're going to download and install etc today. All of the links will be in the description below. Uh, obviously those links can change over time um, so let me know if any of them don't work. I'll see if I can update them. Uh, but uh, it's certainly at the time of recording these are all going to be correct. So anyway this is the link. It brings you to this page here. We just want to click on the latest version, the current version, PCM version 17 for Windows. Um, and that will put it into our download folder. Uh, we want to extract this, so I'm just going to right click on this, click on extract all uh, and keep the destination as the download file uh, folder. I'm going to do everything from there uh, today, but of course you can put this, this folder anywhere you like on your computer, somewhere else where it makes more sense for you. So let's just extract that. And let's just, I'm going to close that window there. Go back to the downloads folder. Uh, we don't need the compressed version anymore, so I'm just going to delete that. And we have this folder in here. Okay, so in here we have uh, an executable. Uh, now something's going to go wrong here. I'm just going to click on this to open it up and we get this error here. No ROMs present. You must have at least one ROM uh, set to use PCM. Uh, so we can solve that. Right, so if we go back up here to ROMs, um, we have all of uh, the folders for the different ROM sets, uh, but essentially there's nothing in them. Okay, so we need to download um, uh, all of the ROMs, uh, or certainly at least the ROMs that we need for this, but we can download a complete set and I will show you exactly how to do that. The next step then is to download these ROMs. So I've uh, got a link here. I searched for it a little earlier on today. Uh, let's open up a new tab and paste that in with Control V. Um, and as you can see here, so very important point if you're doing this in the future and there's a different version of PCM that you're installing, you're going to need the version of ROMs for that version of PCM. So currently it's version 17 and these are the version 17 ROMs. So we just want to click on um, this little download link for the zip file. Once that's completed downloading, uh, let's just go back to downloads. We'll see the folder here. We want to do the same as we did with PCM is just extract it by right clicking, clicking on extract all. Uh, we'll just keep it to the same location. 
click Extract. This is the built-in application for extracting these files in Windows, by the way. So this is what it's just extracted. So if I click in there somewhere, click on Control A and then Control C to copy all of the contents. And then we'll go back across to here to our PCM folder. Double click in there, double click on ROMs, and then Control A to get again to select everything and then Control V. So we're just going to paste over the top. Um, it, you may not get this error. This is because I've done this before, but uh, yeah, you want to replace the files in the destination. And now we've got all of our ROMs in place. Okay, so we're just going to have a little bit of a tidy up. I'm just going to close that, go back to downloads. I'm just going to delete the compressed ROMs. Um, we don't actually need to keep this anymore because um, we've copied them uh, and pasted them into our ROMs folder. So I'm going to delete that as well. So we're left with just this again. So if we double click on there, go into ROMs. If we scroll down, no, we don't want to do that. Sorry about that. Let's just go back a little bit. Sorry, we want to scroll down uh, here and find our application, our PCM application, double click on here and the error that we received a minute ago will have gone. So next step, we want to download uh, the Windows 98 media and start installing the operating system. Right, let's open another tab then. Um, open my little notepad again and I've got a link to the download again. Um, we're going to paste that in there, open it up, and this takes us to the winworldpc.com Windows 98 page. Um, if we scroll down a little bit, you'll see that there's uh, quite a selection uh, of versions of this to download. The one that we want is this second one down, Windows 98 Second Edition OEM Full. So if we click on that, and there's a couple of mirrors here. It probably won't make a lot of difference which one you choose, but whichever's closest to you. And down in the bottom left, we can see that this download is 519 megabytes, uh, which in my case is going to take about another 30 seconds, something like that. So I'm just going to fast forward this. OK, so if we have a look in our downloads folder again, we will see that there is a download here, but it's got the extension .7z or 7z if you prefer. Um, and in order to extract that, we're going to need another piece of software. So if we go back to our notepad in here, I've got a link to 7zip.org. So I'm going to copy that, open another window, paste that in there. Uh, in my case, I want to download this 64-bit x64 version, so we'll click on download. Um, I think in our download folder, I've already downloaded this before. Uh, let me just tidy this up a little bit. So you'll have this download here. Uh, double click on it. Um, and then just install it in the default location. Well, certainly in my instance, it will be the default location of program file 7-zip. I have already installed this before, but it's just installed it over the top, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, now, when we right-click on our Windows 98 media download, uh, in the context menu, we've got a an addition of 7-zip, and we just want to extract it here, the option Extract here. OK, so I'm going to just try and once again, just keeping this tidy. You don't have to follow every step, but I'm going to uh, delete this. We've got this folder here. This is the media we're looking for, this disk image file, which has the extension .iso. I'm just going to drag that into the root of the downloads folder. So we'll go back to downloads. We can now delete because we've we've taken this out, put it in the root, so we can t delete this folder here. Uh, and so we've got our Windows 98 second edition uh, disk image file in the root of our downloads folder. 
So now if we go back to our PCM configuration manager and click on the plus symbol, let's give this instance a name. I'm going to call it Windows 98 SE. And then we can make some changes to the setting. So because I've, in, I've installed versions before, it defaulted to this Socket 7 Shuttle Hot 557. This is one that I've used many times before, and it's always been very successful. You could use something else. Uh, I mean, if you are following along, it probably is best to stick with the same. But you've got a vast number of choices here. But this is the one for me. Uh, also, you'll see that this is defaulted to Pentium MMX166. That's also because it was probably the last one I used when I installed this. Uh, this is a version that I've managed to have some success with, a lot of success with, actually. Uh, so I'm going to choose it. What I will say is there will be a temptation to use the fastest processor you can. Um, this may work for you, but it really does depend on the power of your PC because emulating uh, this hardware actually is... Uh, quite intensive on even on modern PCs. So, uh, in my instance, you know, there's a limit. Uh, this works very well, and you may well need to do the same yourself. Uh, let's go to the second tab anyway. Um, this is my graphics card of choice. Um, there are other options that we can use that you've got graphics card with built in 3D acceleration. Uh, so these are actually really good choices, but I wanted to stick with a more traditional, you know, mid 90s setup, which would have been to have a graphics card and then have something like a Voodoo 2 as an additional 3D graphics accelerator. So I'm going to choose this here, this S3 Verge DX. Um, we can change some things in here. We can have it as two megabytes or four megabytes. Uh, I'm going to leave everything as the default. Uh, yes, we want to make sure that Voodoo Graphics is uh, ticked and then we want to choose the Voodoo 2 card. Um, we can also have either 2 or 4 megabytes for the frame buffer memory size and the texture memory size. I'm going to have those as the most. I would not recommend selecting SLI. Um, I mean... I, to be honest, it could be great, it could be fantastic, but I need to experiment more with that. Essentially what this means is that you would have two Voodoo 2 cards running in the same machine. Uh, but we're going to stick with one for now. So let's click OK. Um, sound. Um, you're definitely going to need some sound. I'm going to stick with uh, the good old Sound Blaster 16. Um, and then we're going to move oh actually let me just have a look in here no this is this is fine we can change the um the address of the card if we need to if we've got a lot of hardware in there but uh the default should work absolutely fine um now we need to this this you'll need to pay a little more attention to um our primary master c drive we need to create a hard drive for it so make sure that you've got the c drive selected and that the type is hard drive and then click on this little plus symbol i'm going to give it a name of local you can call that whatever you like really and we want to give it a size of I'm going to say 2000 megabytes which is two gigabytes which is a ludicrous amount of size uh, uh, capacity actually for what we're going to be doing but anyway I'm going to do it um, and I'm going to leave the rest as default and then click OK. It's creating the drive. Uh, this message here drive created remember to partition and format the new drive. Well um, that happens when we're installing Windows 98 so we don't need to do anything about that just yet. So let's click OK. Uh, for the primary slave, we want it to be a CD-ROM, so just select CD-ROM. Uh, and then the other two, it doesn't really matter. We only need one CD-ROM drive for what we're doing. So let's move across. That's fine. That's fine. Network card, I'm not going to choose just yet. So let's click OK. So now is at the moment of truth this is where we're going to start 
the install of Windows 98. Let's get this started then. Let's just click on load. Uh, we need to go up to here, CD-ROM, load image, um, and go to our downloads folder and load up our disk image file, Windows 98 second edition. Um, let's just click enter as it says here because it says disk boot failure this will probably still fail it does so what we want to do is just do a hard reset and this time click on the delete button to enter the uh, BIOS setup uh, and then what we want to do is go down to BIOS features and then go down to boot sequence and then we want to use our page up and page down buttons to change this to something appropriate for us which I think will be the CD-ROM so it's going to choose the CD-ROM first then the C drive then the A drive so it's going to try and boot from the CD-ROM if there is a bootable CD-ROM in there which there will be if there's not then it will default to the C drive which is at some point in this process uh, where our operating, operating system will be installed so that's fine so what we want to do now is we click uh, escape to quit go down to save and exit uh, setup we want y for yes we do want to save it and this time it should start the setup um, this is a little small isn't it so i'm going to increase the size of this in a second but i just want you to be able to see what's happening here now i'm just going to push the uh, down arrow to change boot from CD-ROM but I'm not going to choose it just yet because we just want to make this a little bit bigger so I think we want resolution uh, resizable will be fine oh actually what do we want to do no we don't want to do that do we yeah I think if we just change it to resizable let's just drag that out make it a little bit bigger um, so we want to boot from the CD-ROM and we want to start Windows 98 setup from the CD-ROM option one is absolutely fine so we click enter um, and we just want to set up Windows now so we're going to push enter um, we want to configure unallocated disk space recommended so the default push enter again uh, yes we do want to enable enable large disk support because our drive is larger than 512 megabytes so select yes and click enter uh, and now it's going to say it's going to restart the computer so hit enter to do that and once again it is going to try booting from the cd-rom drive when we get the option so second time round we want to boot from the CD-ROM and we want to start Windows 98 setup from the CD-ROM so all we've done so far is configure the hard drive so that the Windows 98 setup can actually start installing So if you've installed Windows 98 using VirtualBox, you will notice a big difference in the speed uh, between uh, uh, PCM and VirtualBox. VirtualBox is much, much faster because as I explained at the beginning of the video, it's virtualization, whereas this is emulation. So this literally emulates that MMX166 Intel processor so it will be the same speed as it would have been with the original hardware so it's got its uh, pros and cons but uh, it doesn't take that long anyway so we now want to follow the instructions and press enter to continue the setup so now we want to um, click on continue uh, this is another part of the setup which is going to take a lot lot longer in PCM than it does in VirtualBox so there is going to be a lot of fast forwarding uh, yes we want to uh, just choose the default location 
which is C Windows. Click Next. And I'm going to say custom because we're going to add a few extra components that aren't installed by default. So custom, click next. Uh, in accessories, go to details. Let's just, I'm not sure if we're going to use these things, but let's just add most of this. That's fine. Um, That might actually be all I want to do. Let's just have a look in system tools. I don't think there's anything in here that we're going to be using. No, that's fine. So let's click next. Um, computer name. Well, we can call this whatever we wish. Um, we're not going to be on a network, so this is kind of irrelevant, but we'll leave it as the default. Uh, computer description you can add something if you wish but it's really irrelevant to the setup uh, so let's click next uh, now I need to in my case I need to change the keyboard layout to a United Kingdom one because otherwise uh, a couple of the keys are going to be the wrong way around uh, oh it's, it's British I think isn't it And then regional settings, I just want to do the same. But obviously you want to do this for your own region that you're installing in. And then click next. Um, and that's fine. OK. Now, as I say, this is going to take quite a while. I'm going to have to fast forward this. Uh, but as soon as there's anything that we need to be doing or anything that needs to be discussed or explained, uh, I'll interrupt and let you know. OK. So what we're going to do now is restart the computer. Unlike the last two times we restarted, we do not want to uh, restart using the CD-ROM. We want to, well, we'll see in just a second. We want to boot from the hard disk rather than the CD-ROM this time. So this was the option that we used for the last couple of restarts. This is the one that we want now, boot from hard disk. So just going to put my name in no company click next yes I accept the agreement next and now we need a product key well oh by the way uh, as it says at the top here you either need to press control N to get your mouse out of this window or your middle uh, mouse button in my case I can use the middle mouse button but you may well need to use uh, control end anyway so if we click on the win world uh, and go back a page and go back up a little bit we've got a couple of serial numbers here so if I just pop those in the center of the page uh, just drag this over a little bit I can type that in Okay, so just need to capture the mouse again by clicking in the window and then click on next. And click on finish. And we've still got, it estimates, another 18 minutes to go. So once again, um, we're just going to let it do its thing and I'll come back to you when there's anything we need to be doing. Okay, so now we want to restart again.
and once again we want to boot from the hard disk, do not boot from the CD-ROM. Okay, so this should be the next page that you're on. I seem to be struggling with the mouse here, so let's just... Well, this is a little a little bit of an interesting development. My mouse has stopped working, so this is a good opportunity to, just in case you don't know how, how to use the keyboard to get where you need to get. Uh, so I'm just using the tab key, and you can see different parts of the screen are being highlighted. It's on the time at the moment, and now I've got, uh, I'm into the time zone, because I want to change that to my own, which is GMT. I can tab out that again, and then just tab across so it says apply, click enter, uh, and then, uh, sorry, yeah, hit enter on apply, and then I just want to tab all the way through again until I get to OK. Uh, and I still have no mouse. But um, I'm hoping that all this is, that I haven't got to redo this, that this is just simply because it needs to install a basic driver for it. So we're restarting again now. Once again, when we get the option, we want to boot from the hard disk. We do not want to boot from the CD-ROM. And my mouse is back, so that's good. Uh, enter Windows password, well, we we don't need one, we can just click cancel to that. Um, it's installing a, a few default drivers here, ones that are included on the Windows 98 media. But what we're going to have to do is install lots of drivers. Well, clearly the sound driver has been installed and working. Right, this splash screen, once it finished, finishes loading, there's a little tick box down here. Click on that, untick it, uh, and then you won't see it again, because we don't want that opening every time. Right, so we got a couple of down uh, uh, drivers to download. So uh, I'm just going to show you. Let's capture the mouse again. If we right click on my computer, left click on properties, and click on the device manager tab, this PCI multimedia video device is almost certainly the Voodoo 2 uh, 3D accelerator card. Um, the, well, this is to do with printing, which we're not going to be doing anyway, so I don't really uh, care about that. Advanced power management support, we can probably deal with that later on, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do it in this video. Um, the sound was working, as you heard, so if we scroll down here, we can see in here, uh, we've got the Sound Blaster 16 card is installed correctly and graphics if we go to display adapters we can see that we've got a uh, graphics adapter installed for the s3 verge graphics card so that's all very good so all we need to find uh, as far as drivers are concerned for this video anyway is the voodoo 2 3d accelerator card uh, let's just do something about the graphics so if we right click on the desktop left click on properties uh, go to the settings tab at the end um, and I'm just going to make this uh, 1024 by 768 um, do we need to put this on true color 24 bit well let's do it so if we click apply we can apply this uh, without restarting so let's just choose that and click OK and do we want to keep this set in yeah that looks good no problem at all. So that's looking a lot better. We've got a lot more room on the desktop now as well. So that's that's a good start. So I'm just going to come out of there. Uh, I've already done a search here for Voodoo 
two drivers. So I'm just going to copy that address and go back to our notepad and just paste that in there. Everything in here basically I'm going to paste into the description so that you can find all of these uh, drivers and bits of software yourself. So that's good. Let's go back there and download it. This is really useful. We can um, download this as an ISO image. Uh, I've already done that, but all I'd need to do is click on there. So let's just have a look in our downloads folder. Um, and here it is. OK, so that's what we just downloaded, the Voodoo 2 drivers. So let's just go back to PCM and under CD-ROM we want to change the image that's loaded because at the moment we've got Windows 98 second edition loaded but we're going to change this to Voodoo 2 drivers. Okay so now when we double click on my computer uh, we can see that the CD-ROM is those Voodoo drivers and there's just an .exe file here I just need to double click on that uh, and it tells us um, that they're direct x6 direct 3d drivers for voodoo 2 so I don't know whether this automatically installs DirectX because I don't think it'll be installed by default but let's just see. So unzip to folder, let's just go with the existing one. Um, I'm going to close that for now. Let's go to... So we just want to go to C, Windows, we want to show the files and then just find that temporary folder and all we've got here is uh, the files we need to install the driver so let's go back to my computer properties click on device manager and i think we right click on here don't we properties and reinstall driver next uh, search for a better driver, yep, and untick floppy drives, we want to click specify a location uh, and click on browse um, and we just want to find that location again, so C, Windows, temp and click OK, click next and click next and right so a file being copied is older than the file you currently have on your computer it is recommended that you keep your existing file so we're going to say yes we'll keep the existing file and the same with that <clears throat> and that has finished now it's saying we need to restart the computer i'm just going to say no for a minute because i just want to look in uh in here to see here we go right so it exists but it's got a problem but that is just because it wants a restart so i think once this restarts we should uh that exclamation mark should disappear So right click my computer, properties, uh, device manager, uh, sound video and game controllers and we can see the exclamation mark has now disappeared. So that's all installed. So the only thing left to do now um, is give us the latest version of DirectX. So I've been having a little look at that. Um, so 
I just found this little article here on Stack Exchange, which suggests that the latest version of DirectX was 9C, but not all of them, because what we'll find in a second, I'll show you in a second, is uh, some of the versions of 9C are newer than this date, uh, this date here. So you've got to install a version that comes before the 8th of December 2006. Okay, so um, let me see. There was a link here, wasn't there? So just here, oldversions.com. Uh, I believe, uh, let's have a look. This could be about the newest version. I mean, there is one that says December 2006, but I wouldn't mind having a version that's just before, to be honest. Uh, so I think we're going to go for this one here, October 2006. And hopefully that's going to start downloading. It is. And this is where we are going to have to install another piece of software. So here we have it here, but we're not going to be able to get that on uh, onto our Windows 98 in PCM unless it is an ISO, an ISO file. So what we're going to need to do is if we go back to my notepad, I've made um, a link for this, which is anyburn.com. So if we copy that, um, you just want to download uh, this 64 bit version for Windows. All right. Now I'm not going to go through the process of this because it's a very in easy install. Once you've installed that, uh, we don't we want the free version, not the pro version, obviously, because you'd have to pay for that. And this works perfectly. It's not a problem. So what we need to do is go back here. Uh, once you've installed AnyBurn, right click. Uh, no, you don't actually. Sorry, my mistake. So if we go to our start menu and type in start typing in any burn, the application will be here. OK, so I don't, why? Oh, this has said that I've installed pro. There's no need for that. All right. Uh, create. Let's just go back again. Sorry, create image file from files folders. OK. Uh, and then we want to add. And if we go to our downloads folder and it's this here that we want to add to it. OK, click next. Uh, we need to give it a name, which is which we'll say is direct X. Um, I'm not sure if you have to add the extension, but I will anyway. Uh, but we also need to put that in a location which is in download, so that's fine. OK, uh, and then create it now. That's completed, so we can exit. Um, we're going to go back here to CD-ROM, load image, and double click on DirectX. So let's capture our mouse again, double click on my computer. And here it is, we can install DirectX. So let's just browse to, we may as well just select the same place as we did for our previous one, which is C Windows Temp. And then click OK. Right, is that going to start installing or do we need to go to... I have a feeling we're going to have to go and start the installation ourselves. So double click on my computer, double click on C, double click on Windows, show files, um, scroll down to temp. And let's just scroll down and here we go, DX setup. So if we double click on there, we accept the agreement, next next 
and then hopefully this should all go smoothly and we'll have uh, the latest version of DirectX that we can have running on a Windows 98 SE machine. This is almost certainly going to ask for another restart after this. I, I sound a little unsure in places because I haven't actually installed this for quite a while. Uh, many of these things so I'm doing it all from memory but as you can see pretty much every step is very very easy this is a lot easier than when we uh, did the same thing with VirtualBox okay so it needs to restart as I said so here we go. Uh, the other thing I'm just going to say is I'm doing this is very much a, a bare bones install to we're doing the least we have to do in order uh, to get some great games running. Uh, the games that we're going to I think the first one that uh, I'm going to try and install is Rogue Squadron, um, which I've done in previous videos, Virtual Box, for example. Let's just cancel that. Uh, and that is our next step. Hopefully we can get that working straight away. Uh, and you can see how easy the whole thing is. Right, these, these can be closed. But yeah, this is all looking really, really good. So the next step is to install a game and we will see where we go there. There are a lot of patches that we can install to Windows 98 um, and maybe I'll do that in another video, but at the moment it really isn't necessary. Um, uh, also, we might be able to do a little bit with networking, but we can come to that later on. Anyway, um, moving on. So we're going to install our first game. Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3D but before we do just need to say a few words about uh, game controllers USB game controllers particularly um, so if we just um, if we start typing controller we've got set up USB game controllers here and you can see that I've set up um, I, I've connected an Xbox One controller connected with a USB lead to the PC um, this is well, it's got lots and lots of uh, buttons. You, I'm sure you know exactly what an Xbox controller is and what it can do. Um, you've got to connect your USB controller. Um, once you've done that, you can then open up P PCM and then go to config the configure button. Go over to joysticks and then in this case I'm selecting for an Xbox controller if you're using something else you might have to just try some different things trial and error but I've gone for standard eight button joystick and if you click on um, joystick one by default it would say none so you just need to select this X input controller number one click OK and OK and then we can start Windows While Windows continues to load, I'm just going to show you that this is the website that I found to download uh, Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3D. I do have a copy of this myself. I could have just um, used that, but I thought I'd just try and make this nice and easy for you. Uh, easy for all of us, actually, because this particular download has got an ISO image of it, which is absolutely perfect. So we can just download that. I've put that into our download that's so that's downloaded into our downloads folder. So if we go back into uh, Windows we can attach that image. Into Windows 98. So if we double click on my computer and we can start to install Rogue Squadron. Now everything to install this is just the default. We just click yeses and next. 
the whole way through. Um, uh, as I say, everything default. And yes, we do want a shortcut. No, we don't want to read the readme file. And now it says, um, uh, if you wish, you may calibrate your joystick now. Um, this just opens up the window dialog box for it. Uh, as we can see, we've got a two axis four button joystick. We set it up as a two button eight, uh, sorry, a two axis eight button joystick, but it, I, I, I think this is the maximum number of buttons uh, that this can uh, control. Um, so if we go to properties and we get our joystick, we can um, actually, where is it in settings? We can calibrate it. So it says leave the handle centered and press a button on the controller. And now we want to just go round and round in circles a few times and then press a button, uh, center position, press a button and we've successfully calibrated the controller. So that's all good. We don't want to install DirectX 6 because we've already got a newer version of DirectX installed, which we did a little earlier. Um, we don't want to register it because I doubt if it's even possible. So let's now go into hardware configuration uh, and go to joystick options. Uh, and we can see we have our joystick um, and we will accept that. Um, 3D video card, let's have a look, so we're on Glide, I'm going to leave it on, on uh, Glide because I know it works, click done and then we will start to play, we've got some settings to change within Rogue Squadron as well just to make sure the joystick works properly, this is a very very difficult game to play with keyboard and mouse because the mouse is just ridiculously sensitive. Well, I know things are working because I'm using the controller to to move. So let's go to player. Go to settings. And we want to go to joystick. Um, what you can do is just click defaults. And if, if nothing is listed here, just click on defaults and that will fill everything out for you. So that's absolutely fine. So I think we can now just start the game. Take so I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes playing the game but just to show you that it is working well. Activity. I'm sure this will be ultra smooth, it will look absolutely great, it will sound great. I just have no doubts at all. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to say that I think a second video would be a good idea. Um, we can try to uh, install some more updates. We can try to run some more games. And we can try using some different types of controllers as well. So there's quite a lot we can do to improve on the situation. Uh, but I'm just going to play out this video Your with a bit of gameplay. Is that my imagination, or are those Imperial Burst Droids dead ahead? So I want to thank you now. Uh, for watching the video. I hope you uh, have enjoyed it. I hope you've got something from it. If you've got any questions then please leave them in the comments and I will do my very best to answer them. Uh, my life is quite busy in general. I'm a family man. Uh, I work full time. It is very difficult times. But I will do my absolute best to answer any questions. Uh, it would be much appreciated if you could subscribe 
and tell your friends about the channel if they're interested in this kind of content. And I will do my best to start creating content on a regular basis. So we will just try and finish this particular mission shouldn't take much longer I should also say, if you've got any suggestions of the type of videos that we should be uh, making, that you would enjoy, uh, leave a comment. Uh, I would be more than interested to hear what you've got to say. Nice work, Rogue Squadron. We might make a name for ourselves after all. Bronze medal. I thought I might have done better than that. Where did I go wrong? Oh, look at that. I needed one more friendly save, and I would have got a silver. Anyway. So that is the end of the video. Thank you very, very much for watching the video. As I said, I hope you have got something from it. Uh, any suggestions, I will keep an eye on the comments and see if I can answer any questions. Um, I really hope you will subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So until then, thank you very much and goodbye.